Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to Now Gallery. Hey, Emmanuel, all the way from Japan. Lovely to see you. Hello. I'm just going to wait just to see if a couple more people join. Sure. But um, I was going to say that the last time we did a talk like this, Emmanuel, you were you were in, in Japan, in your studio, I think, and I was at home. So it feels so different now to be in a situation where I'm now in the gallery and people are able to come and enjoy the work. And we've had about 800 people a week, which has just been fantastic. It's been such a, a pleasure to open up this space and this amazing exhibition um, mm. to everybody. So, we will. I think we'll start. Um, I just wanted to say welcome to everybody. Thank you very much for joining us this lunchtime. And I hope that it's kind of slightly weird for me doing this because usually I do Zoom and I can check up on everybody and see where they're at. And so I hope that wherever you are, you're having a nice lunch or a cup of tea, or if you're in Japan, maybe you're having a beer, um, depending on where you are in the world. So thank you for being here. As I said, the last discussion we had, um, Emmanuel was in her studio and um, I was at home and we're really happy to be back. I mean, look at that. It's just such an amazing piece of work. Um, India is around here somewhere and she's just panning around the exhibition. We've sort of cobbled together a, 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 an iPad and a tripod and a skate because we wanted you to see it almost as if you were here. So just let us know if you'd like to, um, if there's anything particular you want to see, but she's going to just slowly go around the gallery um, and show us a little bit of it. It has been a total pleasure to work with Emmanuel on Slices of Time. Um, so we thought we'd actually start with some images of other work and then move back to um, the exhibition here. And that we would sort of start by talking about how um, obviously Emmanuel is an architect and a designer as an art and an artist and the way that she uses space in such a significant way and also I think we can't get away from the fact that she uses colour as well um, and how, how she does this and hopefully she'll talk about that in a little bit. The one thing that we thought just to get you involved was we wondered if you could guess how many numbers there are here so we'd love you to put that in the chat and we'll just see who's closest to the to the real thing. So please do if you um, have a thought about how many numbers there are here. It's a pretty amazing amount. Do let us know. And the other thing is we'd actually really like to hear from you. I find it very strange. That obviously with Zoom, I'm aware there are people here. Um, at the moment, I don't know if there's anybody. So it would be lovely if you could, you know, ask some questions, send us your thoughts we'd really love to hear from you um, and we think that's an important way of making the most of the time here with Emmanuel. So Emmanuel, I'm going to share my um, screen so that we can see some of your work because we just thought it'd be lovely to have a little bit of a, a background and show how you work. Here we go, I'm hoping this is going to... We decided to start with this, which obviously is an architectural work and quite different from what we've got here. And I think what I was struck with when I first had a conversation with you, Emmanuel, was that I was offering you a space and saying, you know, what are you going to do with this space? How are you going to make this work? Um, and this is a very different process for you. And obviously you were the architect as well as the designer. And I wondered if you could talk a little bit about your process um, for both this, and we'll go on to the next slide. Um, these are, are they four banks, is that right? Yes, there are four different branches of the same bank in Tokyo. The Sugamo Shinkin Bank, yes. And so how did you decide to work with color, incorporating it with the sort of white structure? Wow, <laughs> it, it will take a, it's difficult to, to, to speak uh, shortly about that, but um, I would say the, 
this project are architecture projects, so I'm working as an architect for that. But um, I would first say that my approach is exactly the same for, for example, an art installation as size of time or like uh, architecture projects. Um, it, it's the same approach for me and it's the same purpose, I would say, to, to give emotions <clears throat> to people with colors. And um, <clears throat> so the approach is, a, is the same, I would say. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how many it's, I would have to speak about that. <laughs> but then in this case, this is obviously an architectural st structure and it's as if you are in you're wrapping people around with your color whereas in this case the color is coming inside a building so it's sort of two i mean i'm what i'm understanding from you is that in fact they're the same process the process that you go through designing this is the same as the process that you go through designing this is that correct yes it's it's exactly the same uh, for each project because my my I'm architect, my um, my backbone is like architecture. So my my approach is always like three dimensional approach. Um, <clears throat> so the the space, the context is always very important for each project. For example, the, the space of now gallery for space for slice of time or um, the env environment of the city, for example, of the site, for the site, for the bank. So it's exactly, it's exactly the same. Um, the start point is always the same. It's first, I always start, when I start a new project, I first decide the number of colors I will use for the project. It's the start point of all my projects, the first step for me. <clears throat> And for slice of times, which is part of my 100 colors uh, series installation, I decided to use 100 colors plus white. And for the Sugamo Shinkin Bank, I decided to use 24 colors at the beginning. That's the start point. And after in the second step, I would say, depending, of course, on studying this concept, etc., etc., um, I I'm deciding the, I called that the, the form of the color. We say the, the, the shape of the colors. <clears throat> so numbers for slice of time or different shape for the different four branch of the Sugamo Shinking Bank. You talk about shapes of colors and I think that that's really an interesting way of looking at your work because it's, um, almost like you have a shape and then you put the color into it and it becomes significant. And mm. I think with this work, I'm interested in the idea of having a um, piece of furniture that you put into a space and it, it kind of injects color into that space. I think it's the same with, with this here, um, that you really you're very playful with your color. So I was interested in how you ended up doing this, th these, this furniture. And um, yes, again, how you chose the colors that um, are part of the piece. And also, where do you get your inspiration from in terms of where your colors come from? Because they're very particular. Yes. Uh, yes. The most important point I have to say, um, all of my works is based on the concept I name shikiri, which is a Japanese word, uh, but I change the spell, the Japanese spell of it. It's in like a, a made up word, which means um, creating, like dividing space with colors. Um, so this concept, is, is inspired by the city of Tokyo. I've been living, I mean, I'm in Tokyo now. I, now I've been living in Tokyo since 1996. So almost 23 or four years now. And um, <clears throat> when I first visit Tokyo, when I was a student, it was, uh, it was 
as if I saw color for the first time, uh, there were a lot of color like seeming floating in the city and they appear so beautiful for me that I decided to live in Tokyo. That's the start point. And um, I, felt, I felt a lot of emotions seeing these colors. And at this moment, I decided to, to use colors in my design in order to give emotions to people. And um, <clears throat> the second very important point is um, the way to use colors. Usually, especially in architecture, I think, color is always, not always, but almost time, considered as a minor element, as a, which is usually decided at the end of the design process like a finishing element, deciding the color of the wall, the color of the floor, etc. And but um, <clears throat> it's also a point inspi inspired by the um, composition and the structure of the Tokyo city, which is composed of a lot, a lot of different layers, different volume, uh, different building of electric cables of like signboard, which overlap each is an each other and uh, so it's give like a uh, depth to the city like uh, and that feeling i love very much and it's the base of the inspiration of my shikiri concept it's layers of colors it means i use as in this photo is a, an installation called sticks for uh, ise miyake <clears throat> it's a, like a um, different layers of colors. So I use colors in a three-dimensional way in order to create space and not as a finishing touch. And as in the stick chair you, you show and this in a, this installation called sticks, um, the color is used very like in a, like a sticks in a very thin way. So it's like a line as I spoke the shape of the of the colors <clears throat> um, the shape of the colors is uh, in my shikili concept uh, evolved over time it starts like a surface shikili like uh, inspired by the japanese traditional partition like a paper screen or something like that and then i change it like in this project we we can see in like thinner and thinner uh, like line in order to like to create more and more layers to create more and more like emotions and uh, so it's I start from surface to like thinner and thinner and thinner colors and and now as for example in, in slice of numbers in slice of time to use to um, to, to give to the colors like special shape as for example, numbers or letters as Japanese character. So that's the same approach. The shape of the color change. I would it, made say. Me, it, made, it made me think of, and it's not the same at all, but the Centre Pompidou and just the idea of, of color kind of wearing itself on the outside, you know, really speaking. Um, which I think that Richard Rogers did with the Pompidou Centre that, and also that he made the most of, of um, the, I suppose he made the most of the materials he was using like the pipes and he, he took those colours and went with them, which is different from what you're doing because obviously you are taking colour and putting it onto a surface and drawing with it. I think this really is such a drawing. And um, I was interested that this, this sort of came from a concept, this piece uh, for Izzy Mayaki shop came from a concept of kind of balance and unbalance. And I think that although you're incredibly precise, there is a kind of slight discomfort in your work. And that, you know, is it gonna fall down? And is it going to kind of, you know, it's, it, there is a, there's a sort of uncertainty about it, which I really like. Um, which I don't know whether you feel that there is this uncertainty in your work or whether, I mean, certainly here, it's gotta be precise. Sorry, I, I didn't understand. Yeah. And, and, and also, the, well, I suppose the other thing was whether you um, went to the Izzy Mayaki shop and looked at the space and came up with this design or whether you had this design in your head already. 
Oh, I see. Um, um, in that case, like like for sticks and for a lot of my other project, it's um, as I say, I, I'm always searching for like a new form of shapes of colors, and I'm always like uh, like like traveling. I would say in in a different scales, like architecture, like a big scales or like a small like a furniture space. So in the case of um, this installation, uh, the start was a stick chair you show in the previous slide. So I started, it was the idea to, to create like an, like an unbalanced balance. So uh, like something very, like floating, like, like the colors float, floating in the space. So I start with a piece of furniture, but, and I decided after to, to, to develop them in a special way. And for this installation, th there is only one photo here, but this concept, the idea was to connect. Um, there are three shops of Isemiyake in the same street in Tokyo, so Isemiyake men, women, and pilis, pilis. And I use like uh, for 411, I think, I don't remember, yes, 411 sticks, um, like to connect the three shops. So it's quite like a continuity like that. I like the idea exactly of the, um, each of the shops suddenly having the same context. You put the sticks in them and they then, then each shop has the same feel, even though mm -hmm. they're quite far apart. I think that's, yeah, that's really beautiful. And also, again, I just go back to looking at this and feel, of, feel that there's such a keen sense of you drawing in space and I feel like, here in a way you've drawn in space with color. Um, and this, uh, this is the dress, isn't it? <laughs> it's a, it's a, yes, it's a dress. Um, yes, I don't know if you cannot see, I have in my, in my hand now. No, you're, you're, I, this is what I think here on, in this photograph, it looks so fluffy and gorgeous and kind of, you know, almost like it could be soft. And then in the next one, as you've just shown, it, it reveals yes. itself as being something else. And I think that that's what we found extraordinary about the piece here is that when you come in, you have a sense that actually all the numbers are quite jum jumbled, that they all feel quite kind of mixed up. And then as you move around the piece, like India is doing at the moment, you then suddenly realize that actually they're all in a completely straight lines. And mm. I, I wondered if that was what you were interested in doing was kind of revealing something in your work. Yes, uh, yes. First uh, about toge, the, 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 to the wedding dress, about that, um, to add something, it's, uh, it was like, uh, yeah, thank you. <clears throat> it was, as I say, I wanted to make the, like the, fo the shape of the color the most, the thinnest as possible. And uh, it's uh, less than one millimeters. So, <clears throat> so I can create like a lot, a lot of layers of colors and it's absolutely beautiful. And in all of my projects, the material is not important for me at all. I always hide, I would say, hide the material. Only colors is important for me. So for Toge, when it was the idea to create a, it's a wedding dress, but it, it means a space. Uh, it's a, like a modular, like a sea urchin. You can create like a, a dress or a space, like an architecture building. It's the same concept. <laughs> so you, uh, they interlock together. So when you see that, um, it was the idea to create a wedding dress you want to touch. But if you touch, <laughs> it's very hard because it, it's, uh, it's made of like a piano wires. Uh, but when you see it, it's, it's, uh, it's like that. And as you, your question, yes, um, when you see like India show, uh, show now on time, when you see slides of time and you, in all of my installation, I think it's a very important point. It's, um, I call that the three dimensional grid. I mean, when you see my installation or my artwork from like a distance, 
you only see like like colors like colors floating and overlapping in the in the space but when you approach and you get close you can realize that all the i call mo module all the module for example for slides of time all the numbers are perfectly aligned in a three dimensional grid and it's perfect it's like a millimeters calculated and um <clears throat> It's, it's like, I explain the important point to like, to use color in this, like layers uh, to create space, like layers of colors it's inspired for, yes, from, I would say, the Japanese traditional architecture and, and the, the Japanese partitions, paper screen and the city of Tokyo. Uh, the city of Tokyo is quite chaotic, but it's very important that to be, a, a, Yes, so you hmm. I, I think that um, I was just thinking about the colors in Tokyo, and I imagine there must be neons and you know the colors just must be extraordinary, and then looking at this and seeing how you've translated Tokyo colorscape into this um, installation in this building, uh, and I suppose what what I was thinking about was you talk about how you want people to feel color or how you want people to to that you want the, the the piece of work like slice of time you want people to come away with a sense of of i don't know is it well-being do you want do you think that the color makes people feel good uh yeah uh, yes um in one word i would say i i want people feel emotion i want with colors, I try to give emotions to, to people. And this emotion can be, uh, it depends, can be like, can be feeling happy. Can, I think colors can make like people smile, feel happy or give like energy. Um, in any case, they, they make the people heart like moving, I think. So, that's why it's very important in my session. I, I, I want like people feel colors with all their body. That, that's what I felt when I saw the cityscape of Tokyo. I felt a lot of emotions. And in this photo it is, a, is a number one, the first, my first 100 colors installation made in Tokyo. So it was expressed in a very simple way, like layers of colors in 100 colors. Uh, I would like to talk a little about about the 100 color series series because it's important. Um, it it was for the 10th anniversary of my studio in 2013. Um, I, I I wanted people become like more conscious about color because in my case when I was living in France and when I was student in architecture for example I was not conscious at all about colors and that's my trip to tokyo who will give me the the love for colors it, uh, and that's why i i try in my installation to to like to, to to create some emotions for people with colors and you in your day life you are you are always surrounded by a lot a lot of colors um and I decided for the, this concept of 100 colors to, to create the most, for me, of course, it's totally subjective, uh, for me, the most beautiful 100 colors uh, and to create a space created by these 100 colors because, and to be able to see them at a glance because you never have the occasion to see like 100 colors. Uh, in the same space and of course like that people like that you can um, depending of course of the type of the installation like sit under the colors or enter the colors and to feel colors with with your body and 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 i think feel happy usually people smile when they enter my installation they so, do. they're totally smile. and so can i check are these colors that are here are they the same colors or are they exactly the same or they're different? Are your hundred colors that you use, are they always the same? Yes, 
So in slice of time, and it is a slide, it's exactly the same. And of course, the appearance of the colors is the same there <laughs> in Shinjuku. It's, it was my first installation outside. Um, for this, uh, it was a different material because it was outside, it was fabric. Uh, but the colors are exactly the same. And how do you do that? That's what I was interested in as a process. How do you get exactly that? I mean, you know, dyeing material has got to be different from having paper, the particular colors, or painting sticks. I mean, it's your, and your precision in terms of the color is extraordinary. How did you get the exact color that you want? And I'm kind of curious, in, actually, in terms of kind of a process. Uh, yes, well, for my 100 colors, uh, installation. I start with like the the, the, the number one you, you in the previous slide, and so I, I first decided the 100 colors. And after for this one, we we create. It, it was like hand dye dyeing. It's it was like like color recipe. It was like using a, a lot of like um, like dyeing liquids. And we make like a lot of recipe to mix colors, like painting, to reproduce exactly um, the 100 colors. So it everything it's like painting also. It's it's like a it's like cooking. It's like a recipe. You have to to mix very. It's very very precise to mix this and this and this. And and it's hand dyeing. So you have to like to dye in the hot water. For example, for for this color, for twenty seconds or or sixty seven seconds or something, it's, it's very precise. I love mm. this because of the way you have this sort of um, texture and mm. lightness in 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 this. Um, I suppose it's some kind of square, and then you have the 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 very sort of almost severe buildings in the background. And it, the, your work brings a, a, a joy and a lightness to the space, which I think is very much you. And I, the, the next photograph, it's just kind of, mm -hmm. the, yeah, you let people really be immersed in color. And that's, that's such a lovely opportunity that you don't get normally. Mm, yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, this installation, it, it's photo, but if you have the occasion to see, the movie, it, it, it will be interesting. Uh, it's this installation, it's outside. So of course the colors and it's made of, it's very light as my, my other installations. So the installation is like, is like a light, like bracing. <laughs> and when there, there is like a st quite strong wind, the colors move and sometimes the colors are very still. So it's always, it's um, always changing. And um, all my slice of time also like uh, this 100 colors uh, number three also all my my installation um, how do you say English like as you say like light light not heavy um, I think it's a point also inspired by the Japanese traditional architecture. It's, it's not it's not a wall it's not heavy it's a something like like um dividing space using sliding paper screen so it's like flexible and you can feel in opposite to to occidental wall uh, in japanese screen you can always feel what what or who is on the opposite side the nature of the person so I I think my installation are perhaps it's 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 unconscious but inspired by by that the light the lightness. I think that what's interesting here is obviously we're seeing this piece now, but if you come in the mornings, the light comes through and the colours are completely different. And in the afternoons when you get the light from over there, again the whole piece changes. And so, as you said, rather like the wind blowing this piece, um, that the, this work is constantly changing. And I remember when I first started curating Now Gallery, which actually went before the gallery was even here, um, I was thinking, how on earth is it gonna work having a gallery with 
so many windows, you know, it's going to be impossible. You know, how does that work? But what is fantastic about it is it, it, it means that the piece here is constantly changing because of, because of the light. And that's really, that's really interesting. Um, and we love seeing that. Um, so the next piece we've, we've got is Forest of Numbers, which I think this was the first time that you used numbers, am I right? Oh, one thing before I forget, I'm, I can't see if you're asking questions, but just to say, we need some questions from you, please. I'm hoping that you've got some questions that you'd like to ask Emmanuel, because we're very lucky to have her here today. Uh, so yeah, get on the chat or get on the Q&A and let us know. And also let us know how many numbers you think are there. We want to, we want to, yeah, uh, we want to find out from you what you think. Um, so Emmanuel, do, would you tell us a little bit about this, this and also about scale? Because obviously the numbers here are bigger and the numbers here are smaller and sort of obviously that must be about space. And so kind of thinking back to architecture, how do you, how do you work with different spaces? Yes, um, <clears throat> the Forest of Numbers, um, <clears throat> I unveiled, it was in the National Art Center, Tokyo. Uh, I was invited to create an installation for the 10th anniversary of the National Art Center, Tokyo, so three years ago. And it's a, it's a national museum. The space is very, very, very large, big. But um, usually in previous exhibition, um, the, the space was usually used like uh, divided with like sliding wall. So never shown in all its size, I would say. So <clears throat> I decided for, for this, for this um, the 10th anniversary to show the, the huge size of the space and to use the wall size, which is uh, 2000 square meters. And uh, because it, it was 10th anniversary, I decided also to create an, an installation that express um, not the past 10 years, but the future 10 years. Uh, and using like big numbers. And um, <clears throat> this installation, so it's composed of uh, big numbers, which create like layers 100 layers and the installation is divided in, in like 10 i would say layers of parts the first one is 2017 then 2018 2019 and uh, and uh, in 100 colors and uh, in this photo, you cannot see, but it's a, the I would say the lateral side of the of the installation. But I create inside like a like a big tunnel, so you can enter uh, and walk um, from the yellow, which is 2017, to the uh, future uh, years, to the purple. So you are totally surrounded by numbers. And, uh, <clears throat> and surrounded by color. I and mean, it's a shame we haven't got the other photo because it is, it's beautiful. Um, because you walk in and it's, it's quite small, isn't it? You, and, you, and you literally have all these colors around you. And the, I think that's what's amazing is the kind of complexity and the simplicity of your work. Again, those sort of juxtapositions um, like being balanced and unbalanced that you, know, you have both this very complex work, but also it, the feeling it gives you is kind of just a, a lovely sense of sort of simplicity and beauty. So, um, yeah, we're very, we've been very lucky to have it in our gallery for so long now. Um, in fact, before I forget as well, we're actually, we've only opened until Sunday. So mm -hmm. if you'd like to come and down and see the piece, you better get booking and um, come down because Yep, this is your last, this is the last four days. Um, so the next piece is something unusual for you. And I, was, I kept thinking about in relation to this, knowing it was coming up, that you talk about a lightness of your work. And this, although it does feel like, it's also a very heavy piece that sort of sits very firmly. And I think it's the first permanent sculpture that you've done, is that right? Yes, that's right. 
it, it's, a, it's my first public art sculpture, uh, which he, it's, it's for a new, I would say, well-being district in Tokyo, which opens this year. And this installation, this sculpture, I called Mirai. Mirai is, is a Japanese word, which means the future. And um, yes, it, as you can see like that, it's composed of big numbers, bigger than the forest of numbers. <laughs> it's a different scale that's bigger and bigger. It's, and uh, it visualizes the, as a slice of time, uh, it visualizes the next 100 years to come from 2020 to uh, 2119 in 100 different shades of colors. And I don't know if you can see in this photo, but it was important for me that people interact uh, even if it's like a public art sculpture to, to interact. So um, it's composed of five layers, but you have enough space between the layers in order children or ad adults or so, uh, if it's not too big, can, you can enter uh, inside the piece. <clears throat> and, and also an important point, you cannot uh, see that um, in this photo, uh, so it's composed of 100 colors, which represent the next 100 years. But uh, in terms of structure, the future is supported by the past, uh, which is represented in white. So you have the vertical colorful number, which express the future, and the past uh, in white are like horizontal numbers, which like, make the structure of the piece. I mean that I, I, I love the idea of that that, that the the it's, so it's the past is is kind of yeah holding up the future and I think that looking at this work as well people walk in and they just see it as a very beautiful piece of work um, and we're going to I'm going to actually stop share sharing the screen and we'll come back to this space. Um, so what I think is, you know, is significant about this piece is the fact that it's not just about the colours, it's also that you've, so you started, so the white um, that India is just hopefully going to show, the white which is back there, and that's, that's the past, and then we have a gap, and then we have um, numbers that go up, so dates that go up until we reach, and I can never remember what it is, it's 2119. <laughs> So 2119 is this purple here, and then basically the dates go back. What's your, what's your feeling about the future? Because obviously it's, it's a kind of preoccupation. What is it that interests you about the idea of the future and how we're moving forward? I mean, obviously it's incredibly important at the moment and we're all very uncertain about our future. So it seems incredibly pertinent, but how do you feel about your, using yes. the future as, as a trope in your work? Yes, uh, I'm always, I am always, I have been for a long time interesting by the concept of time and I'm all, always thinking about time. And so in this, in this installation, as you say, you, you can see the, the white, it, it's the past, uh, starting from 2000 to uh, 2019. Uh, it's the past 20 years represented in white and the future I represented as in the public sculpture Mirai, represented in 100 colors. It means um, the future, yes, the future is to come. The future is, is, is colorful because you have all the possibility. The, the past is past, is white. It's a, in, it's uh, it's clean, it's white, but you have all how do you say <clears throat> the future is one hundred colors for me. I mean one hundred possibilities, one hundred like 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 emotions. You you can you can yes uh, I'm not able to explain, sorry. <laughs> that makes sense. I think the idea I think the idea of 
I think that we all hope that, you know, the future is a hundred possibilities and a hundred colours. And I think that that's what we hope. And I think that's maybe why your, uh, the reaction to your piece is so strong. And we've had so many people coming and seeing it is because it is very hopeful. It's a very hopeful piece of work. Now we've got Magda, who is, um, with us, hopefully, here she comes. And Hi. she, I think, has been looking at some of the chats and some of the Q&A, and I'm hoping that she's gonna come up with some questions for you. Yeah. Hi, Magda. Do you know what? I actually forgot to introduce myself, by the way. I'm Jemima, and I'm the curator at Now Gallery. So I'll do that at the end rather than the beginning. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so the first question is from Satya. And she says, what is Emmanuel's story with Japan? Does she find this country particularly inspiring? Any specific reason why she established her activity here? Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, I, I, um, Japan. First, I discovered Japan with literature, with book when I was a student, because there was no internet at the time. And as I said, when I was a student, I decided to to go to Tokyo in order to, to make like a research. Uh, I was architecture student and I, I chose for, um, how do you say, to, to the final, like a thesis, the, mem the memory to, for the graduation diploma. I decided to choose a, a subject in relation with Tokyo in order to give me the opportunity to visit the city and that's, my, my first visit to Tokyo in 1995 when I was a student and it was, I remember as it was yesterday, it, it, it was, um, as I say, it was as I, as if I saw colors for the first time, I felt a lot of emotion and I, in the first two hours, and perhaps in the first hour, I was working in the streets of Tokyo. I decided to live in Tokyo. And that's why I went back to France and I got my license, architect's license. And two months after, I moved to Tokyo, only with one suitcase. <laughs> that's that's my, my story shortly. And after, of course, I was inspired by the layers and the colors of Tokyo, which give me emotion. And I try to give emotion to people with this concept of using colors as layers. Looking at this, you can see that, I mean, it could almost be like in Tokyo, the kind of, you know, the, the buildings and the, the lights and the, I mean, it, it's, it's extraordinary. Yeah. That you look at it from afar and then you come in and look at it close and it's equally, um, it's equally interesting, I think. Yes, it's important, the feeling of death, I think is important. I think in, I don't know, in London or in Paris, you, when you walk in the city, you, are, you have like walls, like the building on, on your both sides, and, and you have the sky above, above your head. So it's a very perspective, like um, perspective cityscapes but in Tokyo or like in slice of time installation or my other installation it's like like different building of like uh, some a lot of layers with overlap so it gives like a lot of depth like and rhythm to the city I, I love this feeling I think that leads on quite well to the next question actually which is um, from Vanessa and she said, um, just wondering, referring to the grid systems, would you say it's a reflection of Tokyo's grid planning system and the colours reflect the colourscape of the city? Uh, could you repeat the first part? Sorry, I didn't. Yeah, sure. Um, so she said, just wondering, referring to the grid system, would you say this is a reflection of Tokyo's grid planning system and the okay. colours reflect the colourscape of the city? Okay, I got it. Um, about the grid system, not at all, because um, Tokyo is, the, the structure of the city is totally like chaotic. It's not organized like that. It's not aligned at all. It's, uh, it's, it's most, as in my, I would say, sticks installation. It's like, it seems chaotic like unbalanced, but um, it has like, a, I love this, this, the beauty of 
this unbalance like point. So um, my grid, my grid, <laughs> my grid concept is um, the, the layers are inspired of Tokyo, but the fact that I align perfectly like in three dimensional grids, it's, it's more like inspired, perhaps, I don't know, and unconscious, but my body or I'll say the Japanese traditional architecture. And about the colors, yes, um, yes, but when the Japanese, when I say yes, the, my colors are, are inspired by the city of Tokyo. It's uh, the colors I see or I feel in the cityscape of Tokyo. But when I say that to a Japanese person, uh, everybody is very, um, very surprised because um, usually Japanese person thinks that the cityscape of Tokyo is not beautiful at all. So Japanese people don't believe me, but for me, yes, colors are inspired, yes, by, by the Tokyo city, cityscape. Mm. Great. Um, the next question is from Yuki. Um, it's two parts. So she says, where does your obsession with numbers come from? And also, is your work about the future? And if so, what kind of future do you envision? Yes, yes, quite obsessed by number, yes. Um, I would say I, I love math mathematics very much and I, I, I love numbers. I, I, we are, I think we are surrounded by numbers. Everything is, is created by numbers and our world is organized by numbers. There are a lot of numbers hidden in the nature also. So I, I am very, very interesting by, by numbers. And I... Can I ask something? I was interested also, I mean, as an architect, you've got, mm -hmm. you had the kind of artistic part, but, you know, I imagine as an architect, you have to be good at engineering and you have to be good with numbers. So it seems like almost you've brought the engineering or the architectural bit of being an architect, you know, in, in the mass into your art. Would, would that, is, is that true or not? I don't think, uh, of course, architecture part as, as a like, I would say, I would, I, I'm not sure it's as a technical part. In Japan, architecture is quite technical, but in, in UK or in France, architecture, I would say, is more like cultural and artistic. So um, no. I would say I, I'm more interested by, the, num by the, the numbers and I would say the nature, the numbers. You have the patterns uh, hidden in the nature and, and the, like, yes, it's, uh, I, I like mathematics since I, I'm a child. So, and also, as I say, everything like, like time, money, a, a lot of factors, not only like the nature, the pattern, patterns of the nature, everything, we, we are, there are, all, always, we, we are living with numbers, but that's the same as colors. We are, it's always unconscious. So I would like to, for the first forest of number, my first installation with numbers, I would like to express like the beauty of, of, the, of the numbers and the, the fact that you can like enter a forest of numbers and to be surrounded by beautiful like, like, uh, like a world like that. And the second part of the question for the, for the future, as I say, yes, the future, I, I, I express the future in 100 colors. It's because it's mean, <clears throat> it's like a painting. It's like, um, it's a future. You have a canvas, you have something, you, you can make as you want. <laughs> you can use red, you can use blue, everything, is to come. You can create the future. So that's why I'm I'm seeing the future in a um, like very like um, I would say person can make everything. I would say impossibly not French. I would say there is a, like an expression. I say it's um, um, that's why you, you you can create. You can make as you want. 
That's why I express it in, in colors, in 100 colors. I think the other thing is, as an architect, you might have to explain why, why you're using which color, you know, why you're using this, the, the, why you're using numbers. But as an artist, you can just say, you know, this is it. This is what I do. I'm not, I don't actually, you know, this, this is, this is what I make. Sure. Uh, I am teaching at university also for a long time and I, I am teaching in the product design department and especially, for example, in product design or, for example, the design of the cars, when you are selecting the, the colors for the cars for next year, for example, or five in five years. Um, you, it's not my, my, my job. Uh, there are, of course, specialists for that. But you have, as you say, you have to explain uh, very why. Why is the use of the colors? In my case, no. It's always my selection for all of my projects. I select the colors. It's, a, it's my inspiration. It's my, it's my feeling. It's uh, the colors I appear beautiful and the combination which appear beautiful for me yes <clears throat> as an architect so i don't explain the reason yeah <laughs> oh good and um, we've got 10 more minutes how many questions do you think you've got left magda um i think there's probably another three or so well, that's great yeah. And also just to say that Magda's been putting links into the work, um, links uh, into the, into the um, chat so that you can look and you know, have another look at the work later on. Okay, um, so the next question is from Anna and she said, um, your installations are very dynamic. Do you ever think of using moving architecture in your work? And also, how do you realise the shape of the colours? Uh, when you say it's dynamic, could you repeat the, the, the following one? Yes, about so, um, your installations are very dynamic. Do you ever think mm -hmm. of a moving architecture or using moving architecture in your work? Oh, you mean real moving installation? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's it. Uh, yes, <laughs> um, actually, uh, yes and not. Um, usually my installation, like a slice of time, are, are like still very calm, but like, um, like flowing gently <laughs> in the air, like naturally in the air. But uh, sometimes in other installation, I used like, for example, like, wind and fan circulator to make like the colors move like to create an installation called color mixing if you are interested please check it's it's a concept to have the it's the same 100 colors when you i make the colors moving and so the colors when moving they are mixing uh, and they created new colors that's the concept mm -hmm. And, uh, and sorry, what was the second part? I forgot. What was the question? Um, and the second part is, how do you realize the shape of the colors? Oh. <laughs> uh, so I always create the, the shape of the colors in Japan. It's the same. Uh, I always create it's the same, like I would say, factory. Uh, which makes all my works. It's uh, it's not. I can say it's not laser. A lot of person imagine that it's made by laser. It's not laser cut. Uh, it's uh, it's make. I would say, but finally, it's made one by one. <laughs> it's made one by one. It's, everything is hand, It's made using machine, but one by one. <laughs> it's the only thing I can I can tell you. It, it, it takes a lot of time to make, even if it's a factory, a lot of time, but very kind, yes, nice factory and collaborator in Japan. Mm. I think it's important, I mean, it must be so important to find the right person to work with. That must be key to, to getting what you want. Yes, my installation, I, I, I won't say the answer, I use a lot, a lot, a lot of number for slice of time for example or for uh, always using a lot of modules so it's mean it 
in, we need a lot of time to create this installation. It means I cannot make them alone. <laughs> if I was alone, it's absolutely impossible. So for slice of time, for example, of course, to create, we create, uh, we take, it takes a lot of time to, to get the paper and after to create, to cut all the numbers. And after the third step was to like, to attach the numbers to the fishing lines. It's a huge time, uh, a lot, uh, hundred and hundred of person help. And after, bring to London and you and you uh, and uh, very nice people and nice team take like two weeks to install in the gallery. So yes, it, it's a it's a very important point. It's it's made by the uh, the collaboration of a lot a lot of person to make them possible. Hmm. Yeah, always, yeah. If it's never just, it's it's you're the 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 the, the fantastic cr creator, and then you know you have to have everybody working with you. I probably we've got time for two more questions, Magda. Okay, um, so this is another one from Vanessa, and it's specific to slices of time, and she's wondering why is there a break in the installation between the white and the 100 colors? Oh, yes, it's a good question. Uh, it was a point I, I was studying a lot, a lot when I when I studying the installation slice of time. Um, it was the idea to create like a space inside the installation where people can stand and uh, perhaps yes, India can go. And when you are standing in this, uh, this is a gap. This gap is two meters gap space. It's the now. It's a. It represents the present. So when you are looking like on the left, the white numbers, you are looking to the past. And when you are looking on the other side, um, you realize that you have the, the, the layers in front of you is composed by the very, very small, like two and zero only. <laughs> and it's written like 2020, 2020, 2020. It, it's now, it's this year. And you have the future, and the second layer, it's 2021. And the, the following one is 2020 or 2023. So it was important for me to create a space like the present, in order people can like, can think a little, <laughs> like to, to give the opportunity to people to, to think a little about time, about the, the present, the past, or the future that that was uh, the concept so it's a very important part in the installation mm. okay and what's lovely is you can stand in between and you can see the past and then you can see the future and that that works very well for people coming into the gallery um mm. one more qu question Actually, i'm hoping it's going to be what's her favorite color but yeah <laughs> It's something along those lines. Um, so this is one that people always ask. And um, this one's from <laughs> you. Um, and they say, I know that you love all 100 colours. If you had to pick one today, which one would you be your colour for today? <laughs> today? <laughs> uh, yeah, if, if, the, if the question is today, I, yes. I, I'm always ask my favourite colour, but if it's, it's difficult. Um, if I have to, to select only one, I, I would select the white one uh, because the white is very important in order like the colors appear beautiful, the other colors. Emmanuel, it has been a total joy. I am awestruck by you and it's been a total joy working with you and I hope in some capacity we can work together in the future. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, um, India, for doing an amazing job. I thought she was brilliant showing the um the work and um thank you very much magda for, for the questions and emmanuel we will meet again at some point soon you would we were going to come over to london and i was going to take you out for a meal but obviously that's not happening but hopefully it will happen <laughs> in the future sure thank you very much it was uh, i'm so happy with slice of time with it it was perfect for the no gallery and for the greenish peninsula and and thank you everybody for for everything